Hey, this is Professor Lewis, and we're going to continue our discussion here on Module C, Week 1. And this video, this portion, is not going to cover the P3500s. We have a whole video out there for you on that, that you guys need to watch on how to hook those up with the strain gauges and what strain gauges are. What we're going to do in this video is talk a little bit about the other equipment that we're going to be using with this lab. And the first thing I want to start off with is measurements. This is where most of the students will have trouble in this lab is working with keeping up with the units. Uh, first of all, we have two different choices of tape measures that we can use, and they may be out on the, the table at times because we have different labs that use different tape measures. This is a nice tape measure because it's all in inches. I probably wouldn't use that for this lab. This lab, you're probably going to want to stay with everything in metric. And so this orange tape measure has inch and metric units on there. Now these are in centimeters, so if I go from 0 to 10, that's going to be 10 centimeters, okay? So I need to keep track of that. The other tools that we're going to have that have measurements on them are going to be your digital or dial calipers. Uh, we typically have digital out, sometimes we have the dials out, so you may have to brush up on how to read a dial caliper. And these have an on and off button. Sometimes you can have it out here and zero it and it's not going to read right. You need to make sure that you have it closed and typically I wipe the blades off, bring it closed and then I hit zero and it zeroes the tool out. The other options you have on here are going to the mode which will change our units and I'm going to go to the metric units and on this tool it's going to go to millimeters. So again we've got centimeters and millimeters. We're going to have to do some unit conversions there. The other tool that has measurement stuff on it that we're going to see here is going to be this uh, dial indicator and now this is in inches so we will have to convert the reading on this and this goes down to one thousandths of an inch that's 0 .001 of an inch that's what each division is going to mean here and so if we're looking at this uh, we'll see how to read this when we actually go uh, using it in, in a demo here the thing I want you to remember is one inch is equal to 25.5 four millimeters. That's your conversion factor. So you're going to need to convert those inches to millimeters. So we've already seen we've got a mixture of units going on here and we were able to get rid of some of that by going to metric tape measure. Now weights, you're going to have different weights for this lab. Uh, this is a nice hanging set of weights and it's in grams. Uh, the largest one is going to be a thousand grams. The next one is going to be 500 grams. Those are probably going to be what you're going to use for this lab in that area. We also have these silver weights and they're marked as 5 newtons which is really really close to 500 grams. So at times we will use these 5 newtons in place of the, the weight there. So we've covered some of this. Uh, the other things that we're going to have on this lab is going to be a test stand. We're going to have to do a counter levered test stand and this is the old school um, what we still use we do have a new fixture that we're trying out this semester. Uh, what we have here is basically a, a point that we can now put our beam across here and make a simply supported beam by putting our load on there and just moving these things out manually. Uh, the nice thing is we have these, but one group will probably get to be using this where we have the ability to move this column in and from orange to orange we can have our simply supported beam going across there. And so we're going to be using this fixture for our demo. Now in this lab you're going to be given a variety of bars to measure. So in handling these you need to be very careful with these bars. They have little strain gauges on there. We did a series on there. We tried to glue these on somewhat putting a protective glue on there because they want to tend to be pulled off. So we don't want to pull those wires destroying these gauges. That's one of the problems that happens. If we find a gauge is bad, let us know and we'll try and get that put on before the end of the lab. It does take us 20 to 30 minutes to get a gauge replaced on these. So we want to be very careful with that. The other thing I want to point out is we really didn't put these on at any known dimension on any of these samples. You're going to need to take those measurements per the lab guide as to where these gauges are from what critical edge you're using and referencing from in the lab. Now we have three gauges and so you want to be careful as to knowing which wire goes to which gauge. Now on some of these samples you're going to have to measure the overall geometry or the profile of these samples. And if I look at this I can come in here with my digital caliper and measure that. Now some of the things I want to make sure I'm not doing is getting my tool off in an angle or twisted in any certain way. Typically you only want to put about two pounds of force on the thumb there and then take your reading as to what size that 
tube is going to be. And you're going to go in there and measure it three or four times, take the average, and be good with it. Now, how do we measure the IDs on this? Typically, this side of the nibs are for measuring OD work. These over here are used for measuring ID work. So what I'm going to do is come in here, and I'm going to put my nibs off inside there, and again, I want to rock it and move it till I get to the right spot and take my reading as to what the measurement is going to be on my ID. I have went ahead and put some marks on here with a Sharpie, and that is going to indicate how long it's going to be from the support there to this support over here, and I marked a line that's going to be dead center in there. Again, dead center, the midpoint, is where I would probably hopefully see my maximum deflection, and that's where I'm going to want to put my test indicator on here. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about this test indicator. This has a big heavy weight. It's going to stay down on the table. Now we have a screw right here on the blue side. The only side we need to change is this side. If you notice, if I change this, this is going to loosen up the gauge. So come in here and turn this, and I can raise and lower this assembly. Now when I raise and lower that assembly, what I'm going to be wanting to watch for is when I come in here and put my beam on here, I'm just going to want to move it up just enough that I can go to a certain maybe 20 thousandths, 30 thousandths, and then I can turn the bezel face to wherever that needle, let's say the needle was there, I could adjust it out to zero at that point. So yes, I can turn this bezel face, and if you notice, there's a smaller dial down in here, and that's going to keep track of my revolutions. So for every revolution that I make on this dial, it is going to rotate a hundred thousandths. Okay, let me turn this upside down so you can kind of see this a little bit better. Each revolution, so starting up here is zero, each line is worth one thousandths of an inch. That tells us on the bezel face here. So there's a hundred lines representing a hundred thousandths. That's 0 0.100. So this 10 would be ten thousandths. That's 0 0.01. Hopefully that helps you out. So again, I can track the rotations by that center dial watching it go from if I zeroed it out here, I can go all the way around, seeing it go into one, two, and three revolutions on that. So let's talk about how to set this test indicator up on a beam to measure the deflection, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming in here and putting loads on here, and that beam is going to flex downward, and we want to measure how much deflection we're going to have on that. So this is a major source of errors for students' lab reports, is doing this correctly, zeroing everything out, and, and getting good results. So we went to more of a rigid fixturing setup on this test indicator to help out this semester. So what we have is your test indicator, and what you're going to do is bring this up slowly until we can see this dial maybe go up about 20 thousandths. Okay, so there's about 20 thousandths. That's, that's good enough. It doesn't have to be exact. I've got it tightened down. And what that's showing me is anytime I put load on there, it is making contact. And so what I'm going to do is zero the bezel face out. I'm going to turn the face of the tool until I get down here to zero. Now I'm kind of moving it as I hold on there. I'm going to move it just a little bit more. And right there is going to be zero. So I'm set at zero. No load on here. Now you're going to probably have to zero out your system as zero and then you're going to come in and put your weight on this system. So when I put the weight on here, I'm going to put the weight dead center on this beam, and I'm going to want to watch this dial move. Now you may have to have a person kind of hold that and make sure it's stable with the weight up there. It's stable, and I went from zero up here to some value, and so you're going to need to read that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how to use the counter levered fixture right here. You're going to have to pay attention. Am I going to hold it from this end of the beam or this end of the beam and where am I going to take my measurements from where I'm going to hold it <coughs> to the center of those gauges where the alignment gauge is going to be. So let's say that I had a, a test and I wanted to put this beam in here. I'm going to have my strain gauges on the bottom. I can easily lift this portion of the fixture up and slide my beam in to get to the distance that I need to have for the beam to be counter-levered, hung it up, hanging out. I have four bolts on top of this fixture, okay? You don't need to tighten these all the way down. Matter of fact, we're going to give you a small wrench with a small torque handle on it so you can't torque them down. What I find to do is just come in and snug them up.
and on this beam I could probably get by with the front ones and that's going to be enough. All I need to do is just hold that beam there. I don't need to tighten it down as tight as can be. It's definitely rigid and it's being held. I can now come out and put on the end of my beam my loads, measure my deflection. Again, just like we saw in the previous lab, I'm going to use my dial indicator to measure those deflections. And I can just turn that on, bring it up here, and measure my deflection wherever I need to do that according to the lab sheet. Okay, so we're going to have one of the beams being a round beam and we've hot glued a little plate out here and that's going to be so we can put the weights on top of that so this goes top side our gauges are on the bottom and what we did over here is we filled the tube with a, a piece of brass so that we can clamp down on that and not collapse the tube so what we're going to be able to do is come in here and raise this portion of the fixture up slide our beam in to some known mark and probably just gonna again be able to get away with just tighten down these two first screws on this or bolts. So I'm gonna tighten that up again. I didn't tighten them down really, really hard. It is now stationary, it's being held. This is flat and laying horizontal. I can now put my weights out here and also what that's gonna do is give me a platform to take and put my dial indicator on. I'll put it on this side so we can see it. I am now gonna be able to come in here and use that for where I measure my deflection. So a lot of the students are gonna try and put the, the dial indicator on the bottom of the tube instead of on this plate. What happens is when we're on that, we don't know if, if that tube moves off to the left or right a little bit, it will change the orientation of where it's hitting and it's gonna give us a misreading here on the dial indicator. So at this point, you've seen uh, both fixture setups for simply supported and counter levered how to use the dial indicator and measure our deflections and how to put our load weights on there definitely keep track of those units hope this helps